Hello everybody, my name is Charles. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to manipulate images with Puppet Warp in Photoshop. So Puppet Warp is one of the main tools to use if you're going to heavily manipulate the shape of an object. It allows you to make large adjustments to one area while leaving the other areas relatively intact. So first thing when working with Puppet Warp is to isolate your subject. So in this example, my subject is this draft that's on this right hand side of the image and I cut him out and put him on his own layer with the layer mask. When I first started out, I made a copy of my background layer and then on that copy of the layer, and I call it content aware fill layer because I used the content aware fill in Photoshop to fill in where I had cut out the subject. So in other words, this is what it looks like with the content aware fill. And that is because when I go to put all my points and manipulate my top layer, which is the subject, I won't still see the layer below. So it goes back to best practices of making a copy of your background layer. I didn't want to work on my background layer in case I need to go back to it. Here is the content aware fill layer where I filled in where the subject was. And now here's the subject layer. If you want to know more about content aware fill, I'll put a link in the description and a link in the card above. So the subject layer is where we're going to do the puppet warp. I'm going to change the subject layer into a smart object. And that way, when I'm working on my puppet warp, if I need to go back and change anything, I could do it with the smart object. The puppet warp command allows us to distort an image by clicking and dragging pins, which distort the pixels to which they are attached. So now that we've isolated the subject, which is this draft, we need to add distortion pins so that we can start manipulating the pixels in the image. So I'm going to select the subject layer, which is the draft. I'm going to come up here to edit puppet warp. So now we can use the puppet warp tool and notice when we're in the tool, we need to actually click somewhere on the mesh. This mesh here, you can turn it on and off up here on the options bar on the top, but it just allows you to have a visual of where you can put certain points. So these points are called pins. So let's say we put a pin right here. You see me click and it made a white dot. That is a pin. And that's where you can either drag or keep that as an area that will stay stable. And I'll show you what I mean. So I put another point up here on his head and now I have two points. So if I select that point and I click and drag, it's moving the whole draft. So here's something to note. I'll hit command Z to undo that. You need to anchor points or you need to put pins. So in this case, if I put pins down by his feet and put four pins down there, and then I come up here to the top, select that pin and then move it. Just the top portion of his body is going to move. So distortion pins or pins could be used to anchor points on your subject, or it could be used to actually move certain areas of your subject. That's something to be aware of. Make sure that you need to put in anchor points where you don't want areas to move. But just to explain up here, density on the options bar, if you put it to fewer points, you'll get fewer mesh points. Or you can come up here to more points and you'll have a lot of them. It's probably best to use it or normal in most cases. Up here on the options bar, if I put expansion to say 49, it's going to increase the outer area of the mesh. For most examples, you would probably keep that at say something like two pixels, unless you see a lot of jagged edges and things like that. So again, just showing you what expansion was about. So I'm gonna put this back down to two. So mode normal, density normal, expansion, two pixels, show the mesh and those values should be good for you to go. So some shortcuts for you here, you click on a point and you hit the delete key. That's one way to delete it. Press down alt on PC and command on Mac 
and you see that the cursor turns to a scissors and then click that deletes it also if i want to select all my pins at once it's Control a on a pc command a on a mac all my pins are selected if i want to deselect all my pins at once Control d on a pc command d on a mac they're all deselected if i want to select multiple pins i press the shift key and just click on the pin if i hold down the h key that hides all the pins and if i want to rotate a pin i click on it move away from it hold alt on pc option on mac and as you can see it turns into a double-sided arrow and i can rotate like this so now if i want to grab this top pin and i'm going to pull this guy just like this press down the alt key pc option key on mac and rotate up something like that if i hit the escape key it'll cancel the distortions and it goes back to where it was canceling everything so again anchoring all the points grab one and pull it to where you want and click the check mark to commit and on my subject layer there's a smart filter called puppet warp and turn this off there's the before there's the after i can double click on the puppet warp filter effect when i go back in i have everything intact i have all my pins i can add pins delete pins reposition them click ok so i can go back in and make those changes any way i want hey if you're getting value out of this so far hit that like button so puppet warp is good for moving limbs, arms, legs, somebody's head. So in this example here, I've already cut out the subject from the background and I've made the subject layer a smart object. So now I need to go into Puppet Warp to add my pins. So with the subject layer selected, come up here to Edit Puppet Warp. First thing I want to do is anchor with some pins down here i'm going to place some pins on both her shoes even on this baggage that she's pulling i put a pin say in the middle of her waist i think i want to move her arm so that she's got her uh, gimbal and move it closer to her face so i'm going to put a pin on her elbow and say one at the top of this gimbal and even one at the top of her head sometimes you have to experiment with some of these points and and try them out and see if they actually work for you so first let's try and rotate this pin on her elbow i'm going to select this pin i'm going to hit alter option and my cursor turns into double-sided arrow and that's not going to work so we won't do that i'll undo that Instead, I'll drag this top pin. So I select it and pull it. And that seems to be working better. And then I'm going to select the pin on the top of her head. And I can move it up or back. So I'll move it back a little bit and click the check mark to commit these changes. There's the before and there's the after. So some slight changes, but just gives you an idea of what you can do. First of all, cut out your subject. Make sure you don't forget to put the anchor pins and then kind of play with pins that you put in different areas to see if you can manipulate them to give you the desired result. Let me know in the comments if you think using Puppet Warp is easy. So in this example, her head is tilted a little bit to the side, which is nothing wrong with that. Just in this particular example, I just want to show you that you can, in the case maybe you're retouching and if somebody has a slight head tilt and you want to straighten it out maybe at their request so let's do that here so i've already got this image cut out from the background the subject is on its own layer and layer mask and i'm going to create a smart object out of this and go into edit of orb and i have my mesh the first one i want to do is anchor her body so i'm going to put a pin there say one on the shoulder on the other shoulder one right maybe in the middle of the neck one on the chin and say one at the top of her head 
and the one at the top of her head is the one that I want to try and move. So I'm going to try and just move this slowly. Not too much. Something like that. And then pick the check mark. So I have my smart filter and it's the puppet warp effect. If I disable that, there is the before. Enable it, there's the after. So a subtle change, like I say, nothing wrong with somebody's head a little tilted in a photo. It just shows character, but I just wanted to show you that if you need to do that type of a manipulation of a photo that you can do it. But the key in all of this is to separate the subject from the background so that you can manipulate it. But so key things to remember again is always anchor your image with pins. And of course, first, first separate your subject from the background. And that is key. If you want to know more about making selections in Photoshop, click on this playlist here. If you haven't already, subscribe and like this video. And remember, it's never too late to learn. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.